you are listening to the Gamer Librarian Podcast, the best podcast you can find on this side of the multiverse. I am your host, Adrian, and today I will be talking about what video games I have been playing and the books I've been reading this past month, and much more. Afterwards, be sure to subscribe to be notified when future episodes are released, and show your support by liking and leaving a comment. Thank you for joining. Wow, so we've hit October. It's been a while since I put out an episode. Um, a lot has happened in recent uh, weeks that we've been away from each other, uh, you listeners. Um, in the meantime, I've been playing Armor Core 6, Mortal Kombat, Baldur's Gate 3, and Starfield. Um, these are all the games that came out relatively in September, and I've been trying my best to get through all of them. Um, I beat... Armor Core 6 and Mortal Kombat. Um, Armor Core 6 was pretty difficult when uh, it first launched. Uh, It was a very, very steep learning curve when it came to the controls and the functions for the combat, especially when it came to weapons and building your armored mech. That was a really big um, thing you had to grasp early on in the game, especially when it came to um, not having as many parts in the beginning. You have a very limited amount of things you can customize and then as you get into the much later end game of the of the video game you're going to have a lot more options at your disposal if you have the money and the uh, availability to use those resources on your mechs i loved that actually um it made me really enjoy having to go back and rebuild the mech put the pieces back together test out new weapons and new gear even on uh, replayed missions which you earn um money every time you do them so you can buy more parts which is really great um i absolutely love that i absolutely love that so that was really fun the story is pretty basic there's some like um faux choice you have for most of it it really depends on the missions that you pick um i chose one of the endings that uh felt more like an evil ending uh at least to me i would love to go back and see what the um what the probably the good guy ending would have been like but i think i chose the villain ending at least what it felt like and that was difficult a very difficult uh boss fight towards the end um and that was really fun uh first armored core game for me that was my first armored core game that i've ever um like played fully and given a full shot and finished i've only ever seen like friends play it at their houses and stuff and that's as much as armor core experience i've ever had before playing armor core 6 but uh fires of rubicon was absolutely phenomenal i think from softworks threw it out the park they blew up the park with that new installment because it felt like uh, a little similar to souls kind of combat in in some regard there's some similarities you can kind of uh, piece together from there but it's definitely its own shining game and i'm i'm not the kind of guy who likes big mech uh like media i'm not a big big mech anime guy or big movies i usually like um those power rangers you know when they get the zords together that's as far as i'll go with big mechs uh and godzilla and stuff but armor core 6 is a game that i think people should try out if they get a chance to ever play that because that was an absolute blast from start to finish and mortal kombat 1 uh technically that the third mortal kombat 1 game to come out uh has just come out a few weeks ago two or three weeks ago and i i beat the story uh that's as much as i have with uh in terms of progress in mortal kombat 1 is the story i did that story day one the game dropped i played it while i was playing uh while i was at work here at home and that was really fun I really liked the story direction that it took with the whole um, revamped new world kind of clean slate. I liked the resituation they did with some of the characters, how the like the Katana and Jade and Melina sisters are kind of um, like friends, I suppose. That was kind of cool. Same thing with um, Sub-Zero and Scorpion. I think they're brothers in this game versus the regular lore where they're not brothers. I, I could be totally wrong on that. I, I'm not a savant of Mortal Kombat lore. I, I just enjoy playing them for, for what they offer. But the, the, the lore is pretty cool, you know, for what, what I can grasp of it. But I enjoyed it from the beginning because it had a lot of, like, um, personality. Uh, seeing characters, like, meet each other for the first time again was really fun. Seeing um, this world's version of Johnny Cage meet, like, Kenshi and Raiden and uh, the, the last, like, iteration's version of uh, Liu Kang, who became this world's, like, 
uh, demigod, this version of Raiden, right, from um, Mortal Kombat 11. If you played the Aftermath DLC or the story mode for that, you, you would know. But the, the story mode is really fun. You could beat it in about a day, just like I did. And it's gorgeous. It has quite a few fights in them, maybe about three or four fights per chapter out of its, I think, 15 chapters or so. So not awful, which um, I really liked. It was very short and definitely replayable. I did it on medium. I usually always do fighting games on, like, the medium, middle difficulty um, until I get, like, stuck and I'm just like, oh, okay, I guess I'll have to go easy. Uh, that's just that's just usually how it happens for me. Um, I did do a few of the towers and the um, like the single player. Um, I forget what it's called. The uh, I really don't know what it's called, but I did a bit of it. It's like the thing where you do like full challenges to earn like um, gear and stuff. I think it replaced the crypt in some regard. I haven't looked at all the menus entirely. I haven't seen the crypt, so I don't think it's in it. I think it's what replaced it. Um, but I, I did do that, and I, I like it. It's It feels a lot like the same of Mortal Kombat games we've had in the past in terms of like what it offers, like game mode style. Obviously, it had a story mode and a full little arcade mode, which is like Crypt or whatever this is for Mortal Kombat 1. And some of the um, story endings for like the towers are pretty cool for uh, the few characters I played as. Um, I haven't gotten to play much online or even co-op with friends, which I'm a little bummed about because that's usually why I buy these games, Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter and all these fighting games. It's usually just to play them with friends. But um, what I played on myself in Mortal Kombat 1, it was really fun. Um, I recommend it to anybody who is even remotely interested in playing Mortal Kombat or um, fighting games or anything like that. I can't see much in the multiplayer because I haven't much um, experienced that. Usually probably won't. Um, I did get the DLC characters, but it's probably just going to be something I stick to playing with friends in the arcade towers. Um, one day I'll give the Mortal Kombat online a real shot, because I want to really see what um, Katana is like online. I like love her. She's my favorite character. Um, but this game does have the cameo system, where you tap the, um, the R1 button or some uh, equivalent assist button that you might have and you'll have your assist come in which is a character you'll pick from the menu screen characters from the main roster or characters specifically for cameos and they'll do specific moves like grabs or energy projectiles or other kind of things that you could use as um footsie or your game plan or whatever you might want to call it for um uh beating your opponent and i feel i like that it's actually adds a lot of um nuance to the game you can hit your um and enemies like cameo out of its attack so if you time it right you could just cancel it out entirely i, I kind of like that um but there's about that you know mortal kombat is it's pretty substandard it if you look at mortal kombat 1 versus mortal kombat 9 10 and 11 you you'd kind of feel like they're all around the same kind of game they, they are definitely 10 years apart from each other um 15 years it feels like but um you know, Mortal Kombat's tried and true. They've done the same job for a while. They've done a good job for a very long time with these newer games. And I'm mostly looking forward to seeing what those DLC characters uh, offer and whatever maybe story mode stuff they'll add on. And we're going to get, um, uh, what's it, uh, Peacemaker, and we're going to get um, the guy from Invincible, and all kinds of characters, which seems really fun. Now... Those are the two games that I've beaten. I, I've had enough time to at least beat those games before. But then, uh, like, a week from each other came um, Baldur's Gate and Starfield. And if anybody's been listening for the last few episodes that came out in the past, um, I was a big stand for Starfield. I, I love Bethesda games. I really do. I love Fallout and Elder Scrolls and their entire formula that they have. I love them. And I did play Starfield a little bit before really diving into Baldur's Gate. And for for Starfield, it didn't grab me. It didn't do that like it usually does with other Elder Scrolls games or Fallout games. It didn't really get that to me. I like the lore. I like the um, the world that it's in. I kind of like how it's uh, basically connected to regular human history. And I like the influence that like the... Um, this art style or the look of like spaceships and the overall feel is like general to us. Um, that, that's about it for like the art, artistic side that I like for 
Starfield. It's it's a very different game if you've played Fallout or Elder Scrolls. It doesn't feel like that grand adventure s game, um, at least to me. Um, you usually just like have to go back to your ship and fly off to whatever planet you might want to do or go back to the, your home base, whatever that might be. And it doesn't have that feel of like, I'm going in a direction and I'm just discovering what's there. That's not to say that like it needs that. Um, I think in terms of a space game, it's probably pretty um, accurate or like faithful to maybe what like the experience of being a space explorer would be, you know, where most of the planets are barren, you know, there's not all kinds of specific or your unique life or structures and places to go on these planets. Um, that's like, that's like a caveat, I guess that could be good or bad for some people. Um, because at, at the same uh, point, like if you want that authentic feel, like, yeah, a lot of these planets technically would be just be barren when we first find them, you know, they're not really going to have a lot of things that's super useful. And then they're not going to be populated with people. It's not going to be settlements upon settlements on every one of these planets, you know, let alone like the factions that we have in uh, the Starfield game. And, you know, I, I think that maybe people with regards to Fallout and Elder Scrolls, obviously there was some kind of like expectation that was given to Starfield. And for games that came out in the past, like No Man's Sky, you could definitely see like how this definitely like a... Uh, definitely a bar to be hit of like the standard for what could be in these games um i would definitely say like starfield and no man's sky like two different uh like side to the same coin technically in terms of like how they're treated uh, like since they came out you know if you played them i guess you would understand but the, st the story for starfield is actually pretty cool um you start off as like um a regular minor type person and you find an artifact that kind of gives you a vision and this vision uh, leads you to find the group of uh, the constellation, these group of people looking after these artifacts, like trying to find them. And that's as far as I've gotten. Um, I've gotten a few of the artifacts far enough to where I've gotten some like telekinetic uh, powers and stuff, which seems cool. That's about as far into the story I've, as I've gotten for Starfield. Um, I've done a few side quests and, and everything. I maybe have about 30 to 40 hours in the game in total. And I kind of felt like I was dying to play Baldur's Gate far more than um, I was playing Starfield. Like I would be, do, go be, I would be at work or I would be um, like out with friends, and I would just rather be playing Baldur's Gate than like you know Starfield or anything else at that time. And so I guess we could jump into Baldur's Gate because that game definitely took off way more of my time. If anybody's played it, you've definitely know how time consuming and how much effort it takes to probably finish this game um I, I chose to play it on balance which is like the normal difficulty i assume like the narrative story mode is relatively easy and tactician is ball breakingly hard so i think balance was a really good middle ground to just start off the game um, i chose a druid to play as a tiefling druid and I'm loving that, actually. Having a druid, you can just use it to talk to animals, and you get the animal forms. You get so many cool bonuses. Um, for a party, I've mostly used Will, uh, Karlak, and Shadowheart. I have not touched uh, the vampire pale dude. I did do like his full quest. I killed his vampire friend. Uh, he was not happy about that. <laughs> he was not. I, I killed the dude and then just immediately went to camp, told him, and he was very unhappy. Um, uh, Asterion is a rogue, um, for anybody who hasn't played, and I, I typically don't usually like playing as rogues, or having rogues in my party when I do, like, RPGs and stuff, and I've just been playing this game without Asterion. I've just been playing it with, uh, Karlak the Barbarian, um, Will the Warlock, and Shadowheart the Cleric, and then with my Druid character that rounds out, you know, I think we have a pretty good party. Uh, I just usually don't like having rogues, I never like playing them in these types of games. But I'm enjoying Baldur's Gate. It's like, I, I think it would be game of the year, you know, considering the contenders that have come out so far with um, Breath of the Wild 2 and um, like Armor Core Mortal Kombat. I, I, I think that Baldur's Gate 3 has the absolute biggest potential to become game of the year only because I think it had a much larger impact to the gaming industry, at least like for, for a game that came out this year. It had 
a monumental success for a game that was pretty pretty under um marketed and not many people even know about these types of rpg games the dnd license probably helps a little bit in terms of like notoriety but this game blew up and not even to mention the whole backlash that came out of um certain um people in the video game industry um being a little harsh on the fact that um fans were giving praise to a not really triple a game but you know a a, a, tri- a double a game type of um release that is seeing so much praise for what it has done uh, considering again it's been in early access for five years um and just now just came out on ps5 like a month ago and has been getting tens across the board i think that's really good i think that that shows to like i think that shows us that the people who like these games know what they like and when all those things come together it's gonna show it's gonna have people talking about it it's gonna have people supporting the product the game the franchise and word of mouth is the best thing that you could have for fans of video games you know uh i'm sure there's a lot of things you could find wrong with Baldur's Gate or Starfield or even Mortal Kombat or like Armored Core 6, you know, but in terms of what you're looking for as a package, in terms of what is an like actual experience, uh, that depends on what you're really looking for in a game. Baldur's Gate 3 is so open-ended for almost anyone to play. Um, you can go the extreme routes of playing like a hard pacifist route and try to beat the game without killing anybody or being as nice as you want or being as ruthless and um unrelentingly killable as possible you could kill everybody in the game probably or make most of them unconscious if you want but then that nice little middle ground is where people will always find their experience in the game it's finding their character and playing their character to how they feel and then they just go off into the world and do what the um with what the game gives them i love that you know, I think Breath of the Wild 2, uh, Tears of the Kingdom, would be a good contender for Game of the Year. Um, be- only because, like, it had um, a really good um, word of mouth as well for the same thing. It had, like, uh, a lot of praise for how the developers did a lot of mechanical techniques for the game. I know, like, water and lighting and the physics and the underground stuff was all very technical on a system that's older than dinosaurs came out in 2016 um the switch is pretty old but a soul technical marvel is not to discount that um tears of the kingdom isn't a great game i i personally think that tears of the kingdom isn't a uh as good as game as as baldur's gate or mortal kombat or armor core 6 i think it's just another breath of the wild but that's just you know what i think about that baldur's gate 3 is really great i am about 170 hours in um probably a lot more if you consider like how many times i've save scummed and reverted back saves so when you talk when you think about that um i'm about mm, i want to say maybe 80 percent because i i've gotten the two keystones all i need is um the dudes i, I killed um Orin and the necromancer guy i just need the the uh, steel watch guy who, who like leads Baldur's Gate. I need his key. I'm in his foundry now. I just got into it. I think I'm fighting a um a big steel rot like spider robot, which seems pretty cool. So I'm doing that right now. And I'm probably going to side with the Emperor. It feels like the game is kind of leaning me towards that. And I've just been romancing almost everybody. I've romanced Karlak. I was like, uh, actual tried to do that, but it hit like a stale end, like, like a, but crawl and I can't uh, proceed that romance anymore. So I just kind of said fuck it and I romanced uh, the Emperor and and then we'll do with that. So um, this game's great. I'm gonna try and beat it before um, this week ends just because I want to get on to other games like Starfield and we could probably segue into everything else because everything else that's coming out is very close that I really want to play. Um, Spider-Man 2, like I mentioned, that comes out later in October, but Lies of P, Lies of Pi, just dropped off of Game Pass or um, proper launch for like $60 or whatever. Um, I'll be playing that Game Pass. I'm so excited for it. I love um, 
Bloodborne, I love the Souls games, and I played the demo for Lies of P, and I really enjoyed it that time. So that's absolutely a game I'm going to try and play after I finish Baldur's Gate 3. Um, and then there's the Cyberpunk 2077 DLC, which uh, I don't think I ever talked about this um, on the podcast, but when Cyberpunk first came out, I, I I liked it for what it was. I played it on the Xbox Series S um, when it first dropped, and I didn't hate it for what it was. It was a little buggy. I had some issues with it. It maybe crashed like two or three times, but overall the experience was positive, and it just didn't have the kind of features I thought it would have. You know, I kind of thought it would be the game of games to include almost anything you could have thought of, and it really felt like they did put out the game with as most as they could just to meet a viable launch, which meant that a lot of stuff was just cut or not there. Um, I hated the menu it took to... I I hated the way you had to buy cars in the game. I hated the the driving and the traffic, the the um the speed the police chases were absolutely um non-existent to be honest. Um the gun the gunplay was okay. Not a lot of the guns were cool. I never did the melee combat. I hear that was kind of fun. And the fact that you couldn't customize your room or buy new houses or take people on missions with you or like a lot of your faction choices really didn't matter. Like being a member of the Corpo people is just mute as as an option. I played that. That was my first playthrough, and I didn't really have much Corpo uh, options to pick from. Um, th- that's just the game that came out like two years ago, and I returned the game for full price when they were giving the um, refunds for it, and I would love to go back and play the DLC again. So when that um, becomes a good time for me to do it when i can play cyberpunk 2077 in full with the main story and dlc i'm gonna be uh so happy that'll probably happen maybe november i don't see that happening with something like lies of p and spider-man already looming upon me so probably november will be the time when i go and play the cyberpunk 27 dlc and other than that i think in terms of upcoming games i'm definitely gonna get uh, Mario RPG Remake and the Mario Wonder new side-scrolling game that Nintendo's putting out. Those are two games I'm 100% going to be playing. I'm very much looking forward to those games. Um, I don't think there's much else coming out for this year. I think we just have to look forward to, I think it's um, Tokyo Game Show and Game Awards in terms of like game announcements. I know that Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is getting a... Uh, release sometime in April, like the first game did uh, back in 2021 or 2020. Uh, I have not looked at any gameplay for that. Same thing with Spider-Man, like the newer gameplay stuff. I just haven't looked at it because I'm going to get the games anyway. It doesn't matter to me. Um, so with that, uh, let's get into uh, the novel. I have been reading video game novels for quite a long time, and I'm trying to read a few more um the, the very limited section that they have and i've recently read the sequel novel to the elder scrolls series by greg keys the sequel novel is lord of souls and it takes place right after the first book um relatively and it follows the same group of characters um who are trying to discover the mystery of why this floating city called umbriel is uh looming over uh tamriel uh, or uh, the world, and I really liked it. It had some really cool moments. My favorite was the um, the woman a nag who becomes like a um, um, like a cook kitchen prisoner, where she's forced to work in these kitchens that have like these quotas for these gods, and they have to meet, make like good food for her. Um, there's a Argonian character who goes through a really cool journey of discovering himself throughout this book. I really liked it. It made me want to replay the uh, Elder Scrolls games, like Oblivion. And my friends are even actually, we're going to be playing a um, Elder Scrolls uh, variation of 5th edition D&D um, coming up in the next few weeks. We just finished our Dark Souls um, game. That was really, really fun. I played a Pyromancer. That was great. We're doing a final like game for that today, actually, where we will be doing a 
party versus game. Like three members from the party versus three other members from the party will just fight it out. We did it for a little bit in some like arenas throughout the um, Dark Souls game. That was really fun. It, it was like, uh, I think it was 2v2 or like 2v2v2. 2v2, 2v2, and then I think it was free for all. So now we're doing 3v3, which I think is going to be really fun. And, you know, the, the Lord of Souls book was pretty good. It ended uh, nicely. I assumed it had to just because the next game was coming out. You know, they don't want to have so much, like, be different for their lore that they have to scrap whatever ideas they had set. Um, but I enjoyed it. I think Red Keys did himself a good job. You know, I don't... Um, I think that th this book would add a lot to people who already enjoy the Elder Scrolls franchise. Um, it doesn't add a lot of lore, but it does add um, really cool moments like within the Elder Scrolls uh, world. Like like to me, I liked the, the the woman of Nag where she was cooking and trying to make new things out of like ingredients in the world. Uh, where she uses things like emotions, like terror and fright to make food. So sick. That's so cool. There's a lot of cool moments in this book that's uh, you n would never even really see in the game. It's just because in terms of like events or big scale they're just they're just too large to do in the game so it's nice to see the game uh be translated into a format like this that's why i like these books i like books like these you know you get a little more in terms of the worlds that you um you enjoy and you fall in love with so yeah anybody who likes lord of the um the elder scrolls should read lord of souls they, they absolutely should um maybe it'll branch into stuff for like the MMO at some point or Elder Scrolls 6, who knows? They shouldn't just forget about these books because they were phenomenal. They were absolutely phenomenal. And to be honest, that's about it for like new current stuff. Um, there's going to be a cyberpunk novel related to 2077 that I just bought and I'm going to try and read that at the same time that I play the DLC. So everybody be on the lookout for that. And at least uh, currently I'm reading the book Insomnia by Stephen King. That's going to be at least like the one horror themed story that I do for how for like October Halloween time just to obligate that. Um, I've never read Insomnia and my girlfriend has tried to read it and uh, I'm going to now finish it. So hopefully before October ends, I can finish that. It's only 600 pages or so and I'm in already um, 200 in. So it isn't too bad. We me and my girlfriend have already been reading a series together called A Court of Thorns and Roses. Um, we had started to try and keep up with like a couple friend of ours, but um, she got me into it. And then now that I have passed her in the book series, I have to wait for her to catch up. Um, there might be an episode where she's featured on here and we talk about that series. That might be something that you guys could look forward to. But um, that's a really good book series. Um, other than that, I signed up for beekeeping classes. Uh, those start up today as well, actually. Uh, they're until the end of October or so. Very quick online classes. I'm going to try and do my best for those. Um, yeah, that's, that's really just about it. You know, I've been trying to really get back on the ball with the podcast and deal with work. And I have birthday stuff coming up for this week where we're going camping again. That's an excursion. And there's just almost no time. No time. Too many games. Not enough me. Thank you guys for listening to episode 21 of the Gamer Librarian podcast. It's been really great doing this. Um, I'm going to try and be a little more on time or um, weekly with these episodes, but with the way these games are, it's it's pretty hard. It's pretty difficult to have a game to talk about when they're all like 100 plus hours long. Um, anyway, have a good night, everybody.